In the beginning of all history was the bacteria, the earliest form of life on Earth. Arriving well before other living beings, these bacteria were obviously quite lonely. But being clever little creatures, each bacteria managed to constantly split in two and generate lots of like-minded company. There's reason to believe that despite their growing numbers, the life of a typical bacteria in those ancient times must have been quite boring. There were no human beings around to bother, chase or colonize. All that would start much later. Then came the dinosaurs, the biggest and strongest creatures our planet has ever known. Anybody who's seen Jurassic Park can readily confirm this fact. One would have thought they'd give bacteria a run for their money, but suddenly they became extinct. Nobody knows exactly why. It probably had to do with excess of one sort or another, I'm sure. You can't keep growing endlessly without something going wrong, somewhere, sometime. Long after dinosaurs disappeared, the world was still a very strange and dangerous place. For example, there were no mobile phones or fancy cars, no television or internet. And of course, very importantly, there were no antibiotics. Instead, there were all kinds of very moody and unpredictable creatures struggling to survive. Like these apes from Stanley Kubrick's Space Odyssey 2001. These creatures would go on to become human beings, a species that can be distinguished from other animals on Earth by their readiness to go to war. The thing we call civilization started when human beings began to venture out in nice costumes to faraway lands in search of treasure. They learned to fight with better weapons and even had firepower. As civilization marched on, human societies invented better and better ways of killing each other. As you can see, in the wars of the pre-antibiotic era, warfare was still quite primitive. Though it succeeded in killing a lot of people, the slaughter was nothing compared to what we can do these days. At any rate, this period, known as the pre-antibiotic era, had one thing that made up for all the death and destruction of modern warfare. That was incurable infectious diseases. This was a time when millions of people routinely died due to a horrific menu of infections. Tuberculosis, pneumonia, blood poisoning, scarlet fever, diphtheria, syphilis, gonorrhea, meningitis, tonsillitis, rheumatic fever. Just reading out that list can give you a high fever. In the late 19th century, scientists began to devote time to searching for drugs that would kill these disease-causing bacteria. The goal of such research was to find so-called magic bullets that would destroy microbes without killing the person taking the drug. Not easy at the best of times. Note the term bullets, for this is what it was all about, warfare. A do or die warfare with microbes that was about to begin. A war in which bacteria and viruses were identified as the villains and doctors as the heroes hunting them down to save humanity. The history of medicine claims that Alexander Fleming, described as a sloppy and forgetful Scottish scientist, 
discovered penicillin after returning to his lab from a long holiday. Maybe there's a lesson in there for all scientists. In 1942, penicillin was finally manufactured on a mass scale, and subsequently many other antibiotics have been discovered or developed. All at once human beings had a powerful weapon against most bacterial diseases that had traumatized them for centuries. Penicillin was to the battle against bacteria what fighter aircraft were to human warfare. Deadly, but indiscriminate. Penicillin, like other antibiotics after it, killed as many good bacteria as bad ones. Not long after the introduction of penicillin, around 1947, a bacteria with an unpronounceable name also became unpredictable. It developed penicillin-resistant strains. The microbes had finally begun to fight back, to resist the onslaught of antibiotics. Today, more and more hospital-acquired infections are resistant to even the most powerful antibiotics available, methicillin and vancomycin. These drugs are reserved for the most intractable infections in order to slow the development of resistance to them. Old foes such as tuberculosis, rabies and pneumonia are evading traditional therapies and are now on the comeback. Infectious diseases are once again the leading cause of death in the world. The problem today is that not only are the antibiotic bullets running out of their magic, there are no new weapons to replace them with. Pharmaceutical companies, busy trying to sell lifestyle drugs, have little incentive to invest in life-saving ones. The reasons for antibiotic resistance are complex. Poverty, conflict and bad living conditions in many parts of the world are causes for a variety of infectious diseases. A proper distribution of global resources could help to make things better immediately. Like all good things on Earth, antibiotics too are being rendered ineffective due to their abuse and overuse. Moderating their consumption would help prolong the lives of most antibiotics. Bacteria have existed for much longer than humans. They are also more numerous. It is inconceivable that they will all die without putting up a decent fight. Should we continue to treat microbes like terrorists and try to wipe them all out, when all that the war on terror is doing now is producing more terrorists? Is it possible to coexist somehow without a constant cops and robbers-like situation? As all good scientists know, resistant bacteria have a great sense of humour and are even now laughing at the entire human race. Do we have the courage and wisdom to put aside our guns and laugh with the bacteria? <laughs>